Morning, this is Dave T1963. Uh, typically on my YouTube, I, it's a hunting channel. Uh, but with all the hoopla going on here recently, I thought I'd just get on here and kind of say thing. One, one, first of all, I'm not going to repost that filth from the Olympics the other night because I, I think that image has been spread around enough. I just want to say to those Christians who have come out and supported what was shown at the Olympics, saying, you know, it's Greek mythology, da, da, da. Do you not understand the, ori the origins of Greek mythology? Perhaps you should go back and read about Paul when he went into Greece and stuff and the things he had to say about all these gods they had to worship. Greek mythology comes from pagan worship of false gods from ancient times, folks. Uh, it's satanic. I, I don't understand what part of that you don't understand, but Greek mythology is satanic worship. It's worshiping false gods, and it violates the t one of the Ten Commandments. So how any Christian can get on and, and not take offense to what they saw during the Olympics, and I'll, I'll be honest, I did not watch it. I just saw all the hoopla. But I'm smart enough to understand that what I saw was very satanic. And a lot of times, things don't just have one message. They have multiple messages. But the whole, the bottom line is any kind of worshiping and going into the occult, and, and Greek gods and all that is satanic. And if you don't see that, if you truly are ignorant of that, you need to go do your research and understand what you're worshiping, what you're allowing your heart to ingest, because it does affect you, okay? Uh, for all the other Christians who understand all this, that are so shocked by what... I, I don't understand why everyone's so shocked that network TV and the world would produce such filth. I mean, come on. This world is getting darker and darker by the day. It shouldn't shock anyone. And if, quite frankly, if you read Daniel, Ezekiel, and Revelation, you'll understand that things are going to get a lot darker in this world. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I, I am disheartened lately by, and, and you know what, I throw myself in this. You know, in Revelations chapter 3, it talks about uh, Jesus writes a letter to the church of our age, the last church before his return, which is the church of Laodicea, which was lukewarm. And I'll have to confess, most of my adult life as a Christian, I've been pretty lukewarm. I, I lived a very worldly life. I fell in and out of sin and temptation. And so I've had to repent. But one of the things that, that just breaks my heart nowadays is the total lack of concern for the lost by most churches. Folks, we have got to start declaring, you know, it, it's Sunday school and studying the Bible and trying to decipher what Peter and Paul met in their letters and, you know, going through John and Revelations and all that. All that's good. And there's a place for it. You should be doing that on your own time and you should be doing it in Sunday school. But the job of the church is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. And we're, Jesus himself said that we would, when he returns, he would be, it would be like the days of Noah. And so what were the days of Noah like? You know, I, I've read so many books and theological <laughs> statements on what that means, but it's really black and white. Here's the reality of what happened during Noah's day. One family of eight people out of the entire world was saved while the rest of the world fell into darkness and died. And that's the day we're living in. This world is getting darker and darker, and the majority of this world is on a crash course with hell, eternal damnation. We need to wake up, and we need to start warning this world of what they're heading towards. 
we, we need to understand the day we're living in is just like in the day of Noah, where the vast majority of people are not awake and the, the flood's coming. And they need to either get on the ark or, or face the consequences. So that's what breaks my heart this day is, you know, it's almost like we've become a country club in the church and, and we want to encourage one another and love on one another and, you know, read the Bible and dis dissect it. And all that's good. And, it, and there is a place for all that. But man, if we are not out there with our megaphone screaming about what's pending for this world, We've missed it, folks. That's not love. That's not love. Noah never gave up preaching during the entire time it took him to build that ark. And it wasn't overnight, okay? We're talking about a bunch of years. He never stopped preaching to the lost, okay? Let's not let what happened during Noah's day were the vast majority, only eight people were saved and the vast majority perished. Let's not let that happen during our day. Let's get out there and let's sound the voice. In the last part of this video, as I want to say, for those of you who, who don't know Christ, and, and not all of you are mean-hearted. You know, there are some people that criticize and like to blame and be riddled and put down and you actually hate Christians. But there's a lot of other people that are just kind of indifferent right now. And that's who I want to talk to. I think God has placed eternity in all of our hearts. And I think if we'll stop for a minute and just look at the world around us, we all know something's going on. That things are, are progressing and getting harder for us and more difficult and just more vile. All of us can see it. I firmly believe that even the most wretched soul, God has placed eternity in our hearts. And it. we may not want to admit it. We may not ever take the time to slow down and look at it. But if we do, all of us know this ain't right. What we're seeing happening, how things are progressing, we know in our heart of hearts that things are not right. That it's getting darker or more dangerous, evil, however you want to frame it. So what I want to encourage you is, man, don't, don't take this old sinner. You know, the only difference between me and a sinner is I'm a sinner that's saved by grace, period, dot, the end. I need Jesus as much today as I ever have in my life. I'm having to repent right now in my life for my lackadaisical attitude, my indifference, my lust for the things of this world and, and passions and pursuits and all the things that distract us. So, you know what? I'm no different than anyone else. It's just that I embrace what Jesus did for me. That's the only difference. But I want to encourage you. Don't just listen to me or don't even listen, just listen to your preacher or, or whatever in any church because the sad reality is most churches aren't even preaching the entire gospel anymore. They're not warning people what's coming. But man, pick up this Bible. The Bible has proven itself over and over and over again. It predicted things that happened thousands of years after it was written to a T. Archaeologists use it to find places of interest in cities and stuff that the world couldn't find. So the Bible's proven itself like no other book and no other religion over time. But even without that, if you can't even force yourself to pick up the Bible and, and do your own homework, what I encourage you to do, what and think about this, what have you really got to lose? If there is no God, if this is all just in our minds and in our hearts, you've got nothing to lose. But here's what I'd challenge you. Get down on your knees and say, God, you know what? I don't know if you're real or not, but I look around at the world and I can see that Bad things are abounding and people are becoming more hateful and, and angry and bitter. So I want to know if you're real, I invite you to, to ex open my eyes and expose yourself to me. Show me that you're real. I invite you, God, to, to 
Open my eyes and my heart and show me that you exist. And I firmly believe if you will do that with the right heart and attitude, seriously, that God will do that. And here's, here's what I will say. Everyone thinks of what heaven and hell is like. <clears throat> heaven is living in the abundance of God and, and all the things that God is, whether it's love, joy, peace, happiness, kindness. That the, the character of God, that's what heaven is. We will be living in those things. Hell is the exact opposite. It, it's living without all those things. You know, I, I've heard so many people joking around saying, you know, it's all right, my buddies are all going to be in hell. We'll have a beer and we'll do that. No, you won't. It's not going to be a picnic. It's not going to be fun. It's going to be horrific. It's going to be the opposite of everything that God is. It's going to be depravity, darkness, evil, anger, hatred, decay, death on an ongoing basis for eternity. You'll never be able to escape from the total absence of the presence of everything you know is good. And as bad as this world is, we can escape at times and, and, and still experience the goodness of God. It's present. Hell is going to be the total absence of anything, any characteristic that is God. And think about that. No wonder why the Bible says there's going to be utter darkness, which means a darkness we can't fathom, and gnashing of the teeth. That means we're, we're suffering, and it's not just an eternal heat and flame like everyone thinks, which I think that's presence. The, the biggest thing is going to be knowing that that's never going to change for you that your reality is going to stay the same for all time, for eternity. And you will have known some of the goodness of God that you experience in this world and, and know that that's never going to be present again. So man, for those of you who, who just haven't made up your mind about following God or, or you don't know God, or even if you've rejected God in the past, I just, I encourage you, please take, take the time to just go before God and just say, God, if you're real, show yourself to me. Open my eyes and my heart that I might see your presence. And for those of you who <clears throat> think this video is funny and you, you're going to toss comments at me and you hate me and you revile me and all that kind of stuff, I don't care. That's not important. What's important is that I communicate to you. I'm doing this because I love you enough that I don't want to see anyone go out of the presence of God into the total depravity of what is referred to as hell. I don't want anyone to go there. <clears throat> so you can do whatever you want with this video and you can call me whatever you want. You can hate me and resent me and all that kind of stuff. That's, I'm, I'm okay with all that. But just know that you have a God who truly loves you and that you're making a decision to reject that God and to place yourself in the circumstance of being totally separated for all he represents and all he is, and that you will live for eternity in everything that is anti what God is, and it's not going to be a cakewalk. And, man, that's, that's an eternal decision you're making, so please... If at all possible, reconsider and know that God loved you enough that he took his one and only son. He became man, lived the perfect life, fulfilled all the requirements of righteousness in the law, and then died on a cross so that he could take our sin, everything we deserve, all that darkness, decay, death, and destruction and anger and bitterness and all those dark things, he could take that and we could, we could have his righteousness. That's what he did for you. And I'm going to ask you one question and I want you to listen. Please listen to this one question. Who in this world has done something for you like that? All your friends, 
even your family, your loved ones, who has died for you and given up everything good that they have and given it to you and took all the punishment and all the evil things that we've done and we deserve punishment for and took that upon themselves. Who's done that for you? Muhammad didn't do it. None of the Greek gods from the Olympics did it. There's only one person that's recorded in any of the ancient books that took that upon himself so that you could have live in the abundance and the goodness of God to live in light, to live in peace, to live in tranquility, love, kindness. Only one person did that for you, and his name is Jesus Christ. Please reconsider your decision and understand time is running out. It's drawing, we're drawing near the end of the times. And once Jesus comes back for his church, you're, you're going to enter a period that you can't even fathom called the tribulation to where there's going to be things happening. It's going to be so hard on this earth that Jesus himself said, no one's ever seen anything like this on this planet. And if that's not bad enough, after that time period, since you rejected Jesus Christ, you will enter eternity in a place it's the opposite of everything good and loving. Please think about that. I love you, but more importantly, Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. And he's reaching out to you.